I've been printing my photography since 2014. I've sold prints, I've had prints in galleries, and along the way I've made a lot of mistakes. So today we're going over my top five reasons why your photo prints are not looking as good as they could be. Number one is picking the wrong medium. There's so many different printing options today. Canvas, metal prints, luster prints, wood prints, you name it, you can print your photos on it. But it's important to remember that you wanna print your photos in a medium that enhances the feel of the photo and makes the photo look better. Today I decided to print this photo in an elegant frame that I thought added to the dramatic elegance of the photo. I think the frame complements this image nicely in its dramaticness as well as its color. This photo also might have looked good printed on metal or metallic paper, but if this was a family photo, printing on metallic paper or metal would make no sense at all. It would actually take away from the image. So I'd most likely print in a basic frame, black, white, maybe gold if I was being extra, or canvas if I really want to put push the creative envelope. But my advice to any artist out there who's trying to decide what to print their photos on, stick to the basics if you're unsure of what medium to use and how it will affect your photos and go from there. I mean, come on now, look at how sick this looks, this champagne gold frame against this blue sky. So dope, this is fantastic. One of my favorite prints I think I've ever done, honestly. And I printed it with the sponsor on today's video, Framebridge, we will talk about them later on. One of my favorite services for printing photos. Now, on this YouTube channel, I've done a lot of videos about selling prints, but today I wanted to go over some best practices to make sure you're getting the best results from any photo that you're printing, regardless of the intention. If you wanna sell them, cool. If you wanna print them for family members, cool. If you wanna have them in your house, that's great too. We all want our prints to look the best and these are the mistakes that I've learned over the years that can dramatically decrease the quality of your printed work. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Evan Ramp. I'm the founder of ModernCreativeMoney.com as well as an Atlanta-based photographer and I've been doing this for a long time, really since 2014. So like I said, this video comes with a lot of practice and a lot of mistakes on my end that I'm sharing with you. So if you're someone who wants to make money with your camera, explore photography ideas, or live a better creative life, subscribe to the channel because this is the content for y'all. So mistake number two, is errors in retouching and missing dust spots. Now here's the thing about printing your photography. Anytime you take a photo from a screen and print it either medium size, large size, it doesn't really matter, any error is going to show up. So it's very important that you make sure you're going through your images on the screen, on your iPad, on your phone, and looking for any imperfections or any mistakes that you might've made. I have been a victim of this a lot, especially recently. I did this print run of these Bronco prints right here, and they look good on the screen. I didn't even notice that there was this small speck of black right here. You probably can't even see it on the camera. This is a mistake that I made in retouching that showed up on every single one of these prints, and now I have to throw them out because I obviously can't sell them to customers, I can't frame them for myself, I can't do anything with them. And print companies are not gonna take returns when you make mistakes. Now, this is pretty obvious. You want to look out for retouching errors, editing errors that you make in Lightroom or Photoshop, but one of the bigger ones that a lot of people miss out on is dust spots on their lens or on their sensor. I'm sure you've seen it before. You make a photo at F8 or F10 and there is a dust spot in the sky. You want to make sure that you remove all these dust spots and they're especially common when you move your aperture into something like F8 or F10. Over the weekend, I did a photo shoot with Acura and it didn't really go according to plan, so I had to do a lot of photos at like F14, F18 to capture details and there was so much dust in these photos. I spent a lot of time retouching these images because it's just a part of photography. At those higher apertures, most likely your camera is going to have dust on the sensor or on the lens and you want to make sure you account for that because not only is it going to ruin your prints, it's also going to damage your reputation. Anyone with a trained eye who sees a photo print with a dust spot in it immediately is going to assume that you are at some level an amateur. So mistake number three is errors in your export settings or errors in how you're transferring your photos to the printer. So I recently made a YouTube short about this talking about one of the biggest mistakes that people make that ruins their photography and this applies to printing your photos as well. You see in Lightroom and most softwares, the default export settings are not at the highest quality. So if you're using Lightroom, here's what you want to look out for. The first thing you want to look out for is making sure your resolution is set to 300. The next thing that you want to look out for is making sure that your photo is not resized to fit anything. We want to export this photo at full size, full resolution. Next, we want to make sure the quality is set to 100. This is a big one. In Lightroom, when you first get the program, quality is not set to 100 on your exports. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. 
Lastly, you want to make sure that limit file size is not checked. Typically, I like to limit my file sizes just to make storage easier, but when it comes to printing, you want to make sure that the photo is exported at its complete full size and full resolution. Now, I want to throw a disclaimer out there. There is a little bit of nuance to this. People who are very serious about printing their photography and do it as a major part of their business might do this slightly differently because there are ways to optimize the export resolution. But if you're just a basic casual person and this is your first time printing something, you just want to make sure that you're exporting at full resolution and then you can deep dive into really nerdy printing techniques if that's something that you're really into. Now the second part of this mistake is making sure that you're not doing anything that damages the quality of your photo when you're transferring it to whoever's printing it. The most common mistake people make is transferring their images from their computer to their phone. They go to wherever they're going to print the images and they have them on their phone and along the way they've done something to drop the resolution of that image. It can be something as simple as emailing it to themselves. It can be something as simple as text messaging it to themselves. However you're sending your image, you want to make sure that the full file that's on your computer that you export from Lightroom or whatever software you're using is what is being sent to the printer. Now, before we continue on with this list, I want to thank the sponsor on today's video, FrameBridge. They are one of the best sponsors we have on this channel. It's always a privilege to work with them. Hopefully I get to work with them more in the future, but for now, it's just this video this year and I'm very excited about it. So here's how easy it is to create a print using FrameBridge. You're going to click digital uploads on framebridge.com, upload your photo from wherever it is on your computer. You're going to click next to pick a size. Now this is what's cool about FrameBridge. You can choose from extra small, small, medium, large, XL, or grand. My print is grand, but you can go and choose based on what size you think is best for your particular photo. Now we can pick our frame and what's cool about FrameBridge is you can work with an expert or choose from all of these frames based on what your own interest is and what you think looks best. I personally love the frame that I picked out for this print. It is called Bowery. It's this nice champagne looking color. You get a graphic breakdown of how the print is going to look in relation to a room. And what's cool is if you think it's too big, you can go and resize the print and you can pick from a variety of different mat sizes, which I talk about the importance of a little bit later on in this video. So once you go through, check all your different options with mats and sizes, you are ready to add it to your cart. We're going to make this back to the size we started with, add it to our cart, and it's as simple as that. Now a print is being sent straight to your house, framed and ready to go for you or your client. So start framing your photos today or send someone the perfect gift at framebridge.com. That's framebridge.com and thank you to Framebridge for sponsoring today's video. All right, so I made a little bit of a counting error when I put this video together. I said there were five things, but I intended on having dust spots and transferring files be completely separate. So now we are on the final thing of this list, number five, and that is making sure that you're editing your photos on the backdrop that mimics the backdrop that the image will end up being hung on. This is a huge mistake I see a lot of people make. They typically will edit their photos on a dark background in Lightroom, typically black, and then they go and hang a photo on a white wall and they wonder why the image does not look the same. This is very apparent if you ever look at Instagram in light mode versus dark mode. The images look completely different because now the blacks have contrast against white as opposed to contrast against black. So what you want to think about is where your photo is going to be hung and make sure that you're editing the image accordingly or making sure you're printing the image accordingly. So what I'd recommend is if you're someone who likes to edit your images on black and you know that's where your images look the best, maybe choose to get a black mat for your image when you're printing it. So that way when it's on the wall, it's still posted against black creating that contrast. Or maybe you do a black frame and a black mat to really add that contrast in. This is something that commonly goes overlooked by a lot of people and they wonder why their prints don't look the same as they do on their computer screen. So all you got to do is think about where is the image going to end up and make sure you optimize your editing process to make sure that that image looks the best that it can when it's in its final place hung. 